bit about AFCA. So we are the sole Pan-African trade association that promotes private equity and venture capital in Africa. And we do it primarily through what we call four pillars. So Knowledge Center is bringing the research because that is what will drive investors to Africa. Two industry gatherings. Uh, Jean-Luc kindly spoke of AFCA's conference in Cairo and we'll do one uh, again in Cape Town next year. Three is training. It's important for us to train local African institutional investors on the asset class and train any uh, fund managers locally just to ensure that there are best practices that are shared. And four is advocacy, and that's ensuring that regulators and lawmakers understand the developmental impact of, of private equity. So we represent fund managers, GPs, investors, foundations, uh, development finance institutions like Propaco, um, service firms, and academic institutions. So really anybody that's interested in private sector development in Africa. Um, really our brief is to create an enabling environment, um, to support the industry, strengthen financial institutions, um, and create a competitive infrastructure. Um, these are amongst our members. I think many of you are in, in, in the audience today. Um, and this, very briefly, is really how we execute on our mandate. Um, you know, the research is very, very key. Um, you know, that will break down a lot of the misconceptions, one, about Africa, and two, again, about the value creation that fund managers are bringing. So this is, is, is really key for us. So I'll go into what the landscape is today. Um, so private equity, you may know, really started as an asset class in South Africa in the 90s. Um, and what's really fantastic um, in 2012 is you have a number of fund managers who are pan-African fund managers who have really strong track records, so have raised a number of funds, who's exited for the funds. Um, so as Jean-Luc said, it's really a tipping point and a really exciting time in the industry. So one thing that I always point out to an audience is private equity in Africa is not buyouts. Um, except South Africa. And it's not in any way to disparage, I'll say, our older brothers who do buyouts. It's to really highlight that growth capital and development capital creates jobs. And that's very distinctive about what we do in Africa. And the reason why it is, is we were started by the DFIs. So Propaco and IFC and FMO and CDC, you know, started our entire industry and really helped us focus on, you know, needed areas. And I've listed agriculture, financial services, healthcare, impact investing. Um, you know, and it's really helped to build out what I call the ecosystem of African private equity fund managers. So you have those who focus on BOP, the bottom of the pyramid, seed and capital microcredit, those who focus on SMEs, um, but the majority of us provide growth and development capital equity. And the goal is to create, you know, to invest in companies um, that are good companies to make them regional or continental companies, and there are many examples. So deals can be fund structures, co-investing, joint ventures. Um, so again, another thing that I think is really distinctive about African fund managers that I think the rest of the globe, the developed market is catching up with is ESG, environmental, social, and governance. Because the industry was started by DFIs and there's been a focus on ESG, you have an industry that has a decade of information on job creation, taxes paid, services provided, and that's really key, particularly in this environment where, in this world now where we're looking for growth. AFCA as well was funded and, and founded by the DFIs. So we have a very strong focus on governance. And again, research is key to bringing more capital into, into the continent. So, you know, I can't stress this enough, DFIs, have you know been a vital part of our industry and we estimate actually some research was produced by Propaco at the end of last year which I think you'll have that they represent about uh, up to 75 percent of LPs invested in sub-Saharan Africa so you know they've been catalytic in helping to grow the industry and take that first risk or be the proof of concept for commercial investors and I think now is a time where we're seeing more commercial investors interested in Africa and posing questions about the landscape. So the good thing about DFIs, and a number of them are named here, is they'll invest in first-time managers, 
Um, they prefer local teams um, or internationals with on-the-ground presence. So I've just listed some of the DFIs below, but, th but there are others. So what is the landscape like today? Um, so we think that there are probably between 100 and 250 Africa-focused fund managers. Um, and when I say 250, that's generous because we'd like to include any who is investing in a private company. So that could range for a pure play, so a fund manager that does nothing but Africa, to those who set aside a portion to invest in, in, in the continent. But I think that's impressive and that's growing. Again, we're primarily providers of growth and development capital. You'll see by this graph here that we tend to be uh, under 200 million or 200 to 8 million, that at the top there's a select few uh, fund managers who manage over a billion. And really what we do is, is we directly pro provide jobs. So this figure um, we think is an estimate. And I think a large part of that is, is South Africa, obviously, because it's the most developed uh, private equity market. Um, so in terms of sectors, you'll see that a number of these are consumer related. Um, because a lot of the growth is, is being domestically driven. Africa is no longer a commodity story. And a lot of these are uh, uh, consumer stories. So discretionary, telecoms, financial services, food and agriculture. And in terms of the transactions, you know, again, South Africa is a lion's share, but you will also see tra you know, other transactions across the continent. Um, so key themes that are emerging. Um, so one really big sign that Africa is hot is that you have the global buyouts that are looking to Africa now. Carlisle is raising uh, 500 million, a sub-Saharan Africa fund. KKR is investing in Africa. So that's a really good sign, and I think that that will help really push more commercial investors to look at the continent. I think another thing that's not pointed out here is the downturn. You know, you have the rest of the world um, who is not growing to the extent that the continent has, and investors are looking for new sources of returns. And Africa is a, is a really good, stable story, and that's projected to continue. So something like seven out of the ten fastest growing economies are in the continent. So all of the data is coming out very strong and consistent. Um, another theme that's not listed here is sector funds. So in terms of the Africa private equity landscape, you will have very strong domestic or regional players. You have very strong pan-African players that play, um, that invest in, in SMEs or do larger deals. Um, but we're also seeing sector funds, healthcare, agriculture. And that's a really positive step in, in again, building out the infrastructure. Um, so that being said, there's still a long way to go. Um, we look at penetration, so investment as a percentage of GDP, and as you can see, relative to developed markets or even the BRICS, um, that there's a lot more to be done. So from the point of view of an investor, that's a great opportunity, um, you know, if you have capital to deploy. So early stage of development, nascent relative to the developed markets, but growing. Um, so fundraising, uh, it, it lags behind the rest of emerging markets. And you know, I think it could be one that the industry is very nascent, but also, um, you know, when you're working in Africa, you know, no matter what you're doing, whether you're working in the private sector or in the public sector, you are really kind of, in a way, breaking down a lot of the misconceptions around the, the opportunities in the continent. So, you know, one of our big tasks at AFCA, and I think that we we all shared in working in AFCA, is really breaking down a lot of the misperceptions around, you know, what the risks may be or the opportunities. Um, so we hope in time, as we're able, you know, at AFCA to have more research, as you know, more fund managers uh, have exits, that that will start to change, and more capital will will come into the continent. Um, so track record relatively short but growing. So again, the industry is, um, is nascent, you know, 15 or 20 years old, um, and that's a short amount of time relative to the developed markets. But the good thing is there are, there are a number of fund managers, again, with strong performance and have, you know, delivered, uh, you know, return capital to investors, and all of that will be very positive going forward. One of the things that AFCA is doing with Cambridge Associates is we are uh, developing the first African private equity benchmark. A lot of times we hear from LPs, institutional investors, you know, how can I compare one fan manager with another? And it's great to be able to produce that with a well-known 
consultant like Cambridge, so that in investors can look at African fund managers' performance, uh, which is important, you know, that they can make money, versus other geographies. Um, so one proxy we use until that benchmark is launched is the IFC, um, which has been investing in Africa and emerging markets for a long time. They've posted 22% return for a 10-year period ending 2010. So outperforming uh, their entire emerging markets portfolio. So that's very, very, a very key message to get out into the marketplace. Um, the second is that exits are possible. You know, oftentimes in my, in my job, LPs will ask me, you know, have exits been done? Um, you know, is, is it possible? And in a way, I find that incredulous, you know, particularly with, you know, firms like ECP, Actis, and Orioles who've been investing in Africa through different, you know, political regimes and, and, and waiting uh, different kinds of environments for a long term, but they are. AFCA are working on research right now with Ernst & Young um, and just the data set of exits uh, pre-crisis 2007 to date is, is, is 100, and I'm sure that there are many others. Um, so please watch this space because, you know, it's, it's important that we get raw data out like that to be able to, to turn the tide on the, on the sector. So exits are possible. It's possible to do exits in Africa. They're primarily trade and strategic sales. Um, and as you can see, they're growing. So again, back to the turning point, the tipping point, what, what we think is needed. Um, a strong trade association, you know, an industry body, someone who can be unbiased, that can kind of sing the praises of Africa and, and private sector investment. You know, a better understanding of political and country risk by investors, because we think that there's, you know, inflation there. Um, perception of Africa equals the reality. You know, sometimes um, people often think I work for a charity um, because I'm working in Africa. They don't understand that there's, you know, there's ports and metropolitan cities and there's a Porsche dealership in Lagos. Um, so really, you know, uh, knocking down all of those perceptions is really the role of all of us. So I think we need more fund managers. The ecosystem needs to be built. We need more investors, global and local. Local investors are key. Um, you know, sort of like friends and family for an entrepreneur. You know, more deals and more exit options. And also a favor favorable regulatory environment. Um, and this is part of our job so that regulators understand that development capital, you know, creates a cycle. You know, we invest in companies that hire people. You know, those salaries allow for kids to go to school and it puts money into the economy that's tax revenue. That, that circularity is very important. And then lastly, um, to be able to continue to educate locally, um, you know, to, to, to foster local talent.